All right, hello everybody. Um, we are beginning ES6 today, and uh, we have a friend joining us today. Her name is Monique, and uh, also Mesfin is with us. So uh, without further ado, we'll get started. Today we're going to explore uh, differences between the var and let keywords. One of the biggest problems with declaring variables with the var keyword is that you can overwrite variable declarations without an error. So we've got Camper James, and it's overwritten with David. And so if they log that, then it'll come out as David. As you can see in the code above, the Camper variable is originally declared as James, and then overwritten to be David. In a small application, you might not run the, into this type of problem, but when your code becomes larger, you might accidentally overwrite a variable that you do not intend to overwrite. Because this behavior does not throw an error, searching and fixing bugs becomes more difficult. A new keyword called let was introduced in ESX to solve this potential issue with the var keyword. If you were to replace var with let in the variable declarations of the code above, the result would be an error. So let camper equal James, and then let camper equal David, that would throw an error instead of overriding James. This error can be seen in the console on your browser. Yeah, so let's see what the error looks like. Uh, yeah. About blank, yeah, okay, I can remember. So, console so it's saying it's already been declared, so we can't do that. And if we console log. The camper. Or, let me see. Camper. Camper is not defined. Uh, same time. Can you see the? There are two types of errors here. <clears throat> like the first one is syntax error, and the second one is the reference error. Yeah, let me go back. Mm. And then console log. Did it not console log it? That's James. Let me just do let camper. James, let's see what that does. So, yeah, so it works if we declare it once, but then when we try to declare it a second time, then we could easily you know, find the bug within our code. So, yeah, that's interesting though, that it. Uh, what about if you change the name, uh, James into something, but without using a let? Uh, if you just write camper is equal to some, some other name, yeah. Yeah, so there's camper. Yeah, now. Camera is equal to. Uh, oh, with 
without lead? Not without lead, yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'll just say David again. That's interesting. It just came back. So let's yeah. console log camper. Oh, wow. Interesting. So you cannot reassign like with the let, but you can update. You can uh, you can change, but uh, but without. Oh that. right, yeah. It's not a const. Yeah. You you just can't say let. You cannot say that. You cannot re uh, reassign. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. It, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Can't yeah. So like if I said. Let free code camp. And equal, or let's say this. Free code camp. And then I said, Yeah, so now I just changed camper to free code camp, David. Yeah, you just changed, but you, but you didn't reassign. Yeah, yeah, it just, it just changed, yeah. Yeah, so now it equals free code camp, David. Okay, let's get back to the lesson. Interesting stuff. All right, so unlike var, when using let, a variable with the same name can only be declared once. Note the use, note the use strict, this enables strict mode which catches common coding mistakes and unsafe actions. For instance, use strict x equals 3.14 throws an error because x is not declared. Okay. So use strict. They just kind of sprinkled that in at the last second. <laughs> yeah. Let me go over here. MD. Yeah, you should use let, I think, when you have use strict. Use strict. I guess this is this. Okay, strict mode makes several changes to normal JavaScript semantics. Eliminate some JavaScript silent errors by changing them to throw errors. Fixes mistakes that make it difficult for JavaScript engines to perform optimization. Strict mode code can sometimes be made to run faster than identical code. That's not strict mode. Prohibits some syntax likely to be defined in future versions of ECMA script. Okay. Can you can you do that uh, the previous example, but we with the this use strict and without oh, strict. Um, yeah. use strict. Hold on, let me let me look at this one. This yeah. looks like a, a good example. This syntax has a trap that has already bitten a major site. It isn't possible to blindly concatenate conflicting scripts. Consider concatenating a strict mode script with a non-strict mode script. The entire concatenation looks strict. 
Okay. The inverse is also true, not strict plus strict. Looks non strict, obviously. Concatenation of scripts is never ideal. But if you must, consider enabling script on a function by function basis. Hold on. I'm just wondering what's the point of strict mode, like you use strict. Uh, can we go back to that that console? I'm yeah, thinking, let's yeah. look at the console. Uh, why did it go to this? <laughs> it went to a phone mode. Yes. Uh, maybe down here. There's one, two buttons in the left side. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, let me just widen that out. No, no, you can't. <laughs> let me just create a new tab. Is that you, Monique? You listening to oh, some? I'm sorry. I no. went to go look up what was uh, strict. No, that's fine. I mean, that's the whole point of what we're doing is. Um, okay. So I should use use strict. Yeah. Yeah. And then. I can declare a variable. Yeah. Um, I'll say x equals seven. So then. Now x is equal to eight. Oh, so now it won't let me do that. Then it, it did, right? Yeah. Nothing. So I'm wondering what, like, yeah, they kind of just left us dangling there with that one. This enables strict mode, which catches common coding mistakes and unsafe actions. Okay. I'm guessing we'll see more of this. Update the code. So it only uses the let keyword. Okay. All right. So this is what they want us to do. So I'm just going to change this. I'm going to change this. And so now if we console log this, then it should populate. It doesn't though. So let me swipe this. Okay, VS code. I switch this out. And <clears throat> okay, yeah. The it should give an error, right? Did you give it? This one should. Yeah. Uh, did you? Uh, okay. Can we? Let me open my HTML. And I'll change this to today's date. And. Uh, let me come and open up my stuff. I failed to load the file. Well then. No, we we can just uh, check it any other console or in the free code cup. Yeah, I was trying to access the code. One sec. Make sure these are saved. And then let me come back. Fresh. Uh, you should go to console, yeah. Hmm. Let's 
saying that it's not found. But I know that it is. Uh, uh, maybe maybe I didn't. Name like that. I think the name is a little different. Yeah, the naming is a little different. I added periods. Sorry, guys. Yeah, there we go. It was trying to figure it out. Okay, I need to get my battery charger. Okay, let's refresh now. Uh, so. Drag and drop it in the, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> in the. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Not here. It in that Zoom thing. Yeah. Yeah, in the yard, yeah. All right, let's see. Okay, so just said undefined. Okay, line number 10. Can you see that? Line 10. In the JavaScript file. It said undefined for cat talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and whether you just because uh, you you didn't declare any variable, it's just yeah. There's no key let oh. key. Ah, there, there. Who said cat name equals Oliver? Mm. And I don't need to. I don't need any parameters. That's just weird. Okay. Oh, there's no parameter because the function has no parameters. That's just weird. All right. Uh, I think you should write return inside. Ah, uh, I think you're right. Return quote or something. Cat name or quote, yeah. Quote, oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see what it does. Oh, I misspelled return. Didn't do anything. Yeah. Okay, let's see what it does now. Uh, okay. Reload. I need to set up my live server. I've been having problems with my live server, though. Okay. All right. So we got it to work. Yeah, uh, so now to get that user strict, to get it to work, and what you have to... I may have lost my... One sec. Where did my... My tabs closed, sorry. Okay. This is bug stuff. Sorry, all my tabs closed. Let me make sure this doesn't play. I'll just click out of this. Okay. I've probably gotten too many videos on my computer. <laughs> from our sessions. It's slowing my computer down. One sec. I need to get my charger real quick. But I think we got that one there. Yeah, lead, lead is really a common thing there. I think I pretty much heard like you just should basically use let and const instead of using var unless you really need mm -hmm. something like a global variable. Um, 
I'm trying to code the camping van when it was originally the plan. But were you able to, was everybody able to uh, get something to log in their console on their browser? That's me. Right now I'm streaming y'all on my phone. Okay, that's cool. No, 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 no. I want to go to the computer, so that's me entering. Oh, okay. But yeah, I need to fix this. So let's just let, let, and then it should run the test. But uh, did you guys get that one? Everything's good. Monique, you with us? Monique, you with us? I guess she switched to her computer. Mesvin, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I'm guessing she's switching no. devices. We'll give her a minute. I'm get. I just haven't seen you strict as much. It's just uh, what I understand is like you should use the uh, keyword like let. Otherwise, without. It makes it more strict, like uh, you have to write everything according to the, the standard. <clears throat> With strict, when you put something in strict mode? Yeah, if you write, uh, if you use, use strict, like uh, every variable should have this keyword, for example, let. Without that, you cannot use and uh, use strict mode. But uh, it's not that a big deal, but. Yeah, I just haven't ever used it. Uh, I mean, I've heard of it. I actually heard of it re pretty recently, actually. But uh, I'm still like just left wondering why I even knew to, need to use, uh, use strict. Okay. Strict mode changes some previously accepted mistakes into errors. JavaScript was designed to be easy for novice developers, and sometimes it gives operations which should be errors, non-errors, semantics. Sometimes this fixes the immediate problem, but sometimes this creates worse problems in the future. Strict mode treats these mistakes as errors so that they're discovered and promptly fixed. Okay, so if you had declared something as a variable, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that, I think that's what they're talking about. First, strict mode makes it impossible to accidentally create global variables. In normal yeah. JavaScript, mistyping a variable in an assignment creates a new property on the global object and continues to work, although future failure is possible, like in modern JavaScript. Yeah, it's just a, it's a good practice, like to to apply to use it, but it's not a must. Okay. Yeah, because I've always just seen people use let and const, and they've never used this, as far as yeah I know. Strict mode makes assignments which 
would otherwise silently fail to throw an exception. For example, not a number is a non-writable global variable. In normal code assigning, assigning to NAN does nothing. The developer receives no failure feedback. In strict mode, assigning to NAN throws an exception. Any assignment that silently fails in normal code assignment to a non-writable global or property assignment to a getter only property assignment to a new property on a non-extensible object will throw in strict mode. So each of these would give them a type error mm. because of the yeah. use strict mode. Because it's undefined and infinity though. But if they took this away, then they would then, just run, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, JavaScript. It's just weird. Yeah. Monique, you back with us? Monique, are you able to get your volume? Uh, your microphone? Maybe, uh, can you use the chat function? Monique? Did she say something? Are you back with me? Okay. Okay, good. I'll move to the next thing. I'll definitely have to do some reading up on this strict mode there. All right, compare scopes of the var and let keywords. When you declare a variable with the var keyword, it is declared globally or locally if declared inside a function. The let keyword behaves similarly, but with some extra features. When you declare a variable with the let keyword inside a block, statement or expression, it scopes, its scope is limited to that block statement or expression. So, for example, we have an array, and it's got a for loop inside of it, or no, no, the for loop is outside of it, and they're calling num array, and they're saying push, push, okay, so we're starting at zero, so zero to two. It's going to go zero to two in the for loop. And it's going to push zero to two. Yeah. So that returns zero to two. And I will be at three because that's where it stopped. And yeah. So this, so uh, this is not limited. Yeah. It's a var. It's a var and the variable num array can be accessed yeah. in global. It's global. outside of the block, yeah. 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 So it worked. Yeah. Yeah, but if uh, it's a the var way. keyword i is declared globally, so when i plus plus is executed, it updates the global variable. This code is similar to the following. Okay. Yeah. So we actually declared the I there. Yeah. 
This behavior will cause problems if you were to create a variable or create a function and store it later for use inside a for loop that uses the i variable. This is because the stored function will always refer to the value of the updated global i variable. So we've got a variable, it's called print num2. We use the variable i. So same thing. If i yes. is equal to 2, then print num2 equals function return i. Okay. Mm. Yeah. In other words, like we, we, because of this var in the first line, we are able to access this function. Yeah. Global, like, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh, three, not two. So it's still returning three because it's a global variable. Yeah. But if. So we were wanting it to return two, but it's it's only coming out with three, right? That's the error. Yeah. In this one. Yeah. All right. As you can see, print num two prints three and not two. This is because the value assigned to i was updated with the print num two function that returns the global i and not the, the value i had when the function was created in and for a loop. In the for loop. The let keyword does not follow this behavior. OK, so let me say use strict. Let print num2. Okay. Uh, so these let in both situations. Yeah, in this case it's let. Yeah, instead of var. Yeah. Because even var inside of yeah. the for loop condition, or not the the declaration. Yeah. And we are not accessing this i outside of the this function during when we use let yeah it's it's just this block it's a, yeah it's a local it's not defined outside of the block yeah. that's why now we managed to yeah. access only two but in the previous uh, uh, okay well we can we access outside of the function the previous one yeah then it just returned three so okay. it basically allows you to have this instance of i inside this function. inside of its own container without it without it uh conflicting with anything outside of it yeah it become like private and it stay there yeah 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 because yeah, you you and then that allows you to use the i again in a later situation and it's like clean yeah. slate like no not access the, the whole function outside but not the i yeah console.log you can see the uh, function. you can access this chunk exactly by uh, calling the function yeah but Not you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to call i but mm. it's not, it's designed such that you don't want to access i anyway 
Of course. Because it's yeah. just it's just this. Yeah. It's just doing this, you know. You would call this if you wanted to access this anyway. Yeah. Monique, you with us? Does that make sense? Any questions? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm gonna keep the Zoom chat up over here. I is not defined because it was not declared in the global scope. It is only declared within the for loop statement. Print num2 function returned the correct value because three different I variables with unique values, zero, one, and two, were created by the let keyword within the loop statement. It fixed the code so that I declared in the if statement is a separate variable than I declared in the first line of the function. Be certain not to use the var keyword anywhere in your code. Uh, so this exercise is designed to illustrate the difference between how var and let keywords assign scope to the declared variable. When programming a function similar to the one used in this exercise, is often better to use different variable names to avoid confusion. Okay. So, let me see. Oh. It's a separate variable than I declared in the first line of the function. Okay, so. And just call it outside of or oh, wait. No. Let me go back. I think inside, but the after the function. Or what? It should be function scoped. Yeah, I think it's fine, maybe like that. Fix the code so that I declared in the if statement is a separate variable. Uh, I think I have to say let. Yeah, once I say let, then it's saying let I be I inside yeah. of the if statement. Yeah. Yeah, I think it I think it's saying that. Yeah. Um so is this the one inside the if I and the one outside, are they the same I or no, they're different. Yeah, see. Yeah. If it's I in here, then mm, maybe change one of the it's returning it's returning this I. But if I say that, let that, yeah, that one is going one. That makes it um standalone inside of this block. Yeah, we okay. cannot access the one outside the, the scope just because of let. Yeah. Okay. For the next one. Declare a read only variable with the const keyword. Let is not the only new way to declare variables in ES6. You can also declare variables using the const keyword. Const has all the awesome features that let has with the added bonus that variables declared using const are read only. They are constant value, which means that once a variable is assigned with const, it cannot be reassigned. And so if a pet 
equals cats. And then if we try to return that, it will return an error. All right. So let's see what error this gives us. In the console. It says type error. Mm -hmm. Assignment to constant variable at line three. But if I say fave pet number two, and I call that fave pet, let's call it constant. Two. Oh, that's right. And then it's one handed with the kiddo. Okay. Yeah, I think still it gave you, yeah, because uh, the first one is still declared. Uh, const five, the first variable. Whenever you run here in the console, Mm -hmm. It seems like you are re again. You are assigning the same variable. This fav pet, the first one, the cat, cat variable. Mm -hmm. So you have to uh, remove the const from the first one. From the cat variable, you should remove the const. I wonder yeah, why this is still giving me an error though, because I named it something it's different. It's not that one giving you error, it's the first one. Up here? Yeah, because every time you uh, run, oh, okay, okay. you are assigning same variable. I got it, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so maybe remove that const. <clears throat> so log. And then. Sorry, I'm just typing with one hand. Okay. Let me say fave. Fave pet. So it's going to turn cat. And then yeah. Let's say fave. All right, that doesn't return anything. Maybe if I just say, ah, yeah. I think I get it. Because I declared it up here, I can't yeah. declare it again. Yeah, in each of these instances, yeah, yeah, it's a constant. Even if it's the same thing, that's interesting. Yeah, already the name is there. Like so. it's declared once, so whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe I need. Oh, type error. I think, I think type error just has to do with the fact that it is a constant. So because it's that type, then I don't know. Does that, does it, do you think that's right, Mesfin? Because the type, in terms of that it's a constant, it, it needs to be. Um, I don't know if she, she can share uh, her code, like the variable. What did she assign? Yeah, feel free to share your screen, Monique. If you've got a type error that you want no, okay. us to look at with you. Can you share your screen, Monique, with the type error that you have? I may look up type error. No, she can copy and paste the, that code, the code which throws error here in the chat. Yeah, you can do that as well. Yeah, I'm looking it up on MDN. It says type error. Yeah, there are kind of 
it was reference your type it was yeah. The type error object represents an error when a value is not of the expected type. Is it something like a string or integers or that kind of error? A type error is thrown when an operand or argument passed to a function is incompatible with the type expected by what by okay. by that operator or function maybe this equal sign okay <clears throat> Those, that kind of yeah so like in this instance we were expecting we were expecting to be able to redefine the fade pet yeah but because of the fact that it's a constant and it's already been declared up here, then we can't do that. So that's why it returns an error because mm. we're expecting to redeclare it or to declare it as cats a second time. But they're saying you can't do that because the rules are that a constant doesn't once it's assigned, it doesn't get assigned again. Ah, uh, that's okay. Oh, we're uh, we're running JavaScript through the um, through the console. Um, so, like within uh, a blank page, I just came to a blank tab. Okay, that's fine. We're we're usually uh, coming close. I don't know how to use Node.js. I have to learn that. But um, yeah, it's fine if you need to go. I'll load the recording up. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm always willing to learn. But um, are you needing to go now, Monique, or are you? Um, okay, okay. At what time? We usually end around 7 a.m. Central Time. So we should go from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Okay. But yeah. But I'm, I'm accessing the JavaScript by, I run it in here in the console, but then um, I can also connect it to this HTML file by adding it to the source. Yeah, that's good, good. I'm also in the midst of a job search myself, so that's, uh, I have a lot of time in the daytime, but uh, I'm forgetting it's Monday, uh, yeah. But anyway, back to, let me see. Oh, I was over in this window. But I just connected this. Um, uh, I set in this source, I set a script to connect to the JavaScript file that I have open here. And so when I have that one running as the source of the script, then um, I just save it here and then like I can console log something here. Console log. Um, hey. So I just console log that. And then if I come over here and I reload, I need to set up my live server so that it 
but then I come to my console log, it says, hey, and I just put that into the code. But was that what you were asking, Monique? Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. You can, you know, like I need to change this one. The HTML. Because we're no longer there. Yes, six. But anyhow, um, yeah, that's really cool stuff there. Um, all right, but yeah, let and const, um, the difference between let and const. Messin, would you like to do that one? I feel like I could do that, but okay. If you'd like to share your screen, go ahead. You can type type through. I can I can say uh, speak what you're saying from the chat. But the biggest thing comes down to the const is read only. And let is they're both block scope. But let is is writable, and const is read only. All right, cool. You can see your screen. Let me pull up the chat. Monique, did you say that your mic is still not working? If you're talking, Monique, I, I can't hear you. You have to uh, speak to us in the chat. Monique, we're we're only seeing your um, your VS Code. Were you wanting to show us something from your browser? Yeah, you, you may have to share um, the entire desktop. That's okay. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. It's okay. Um, yeah, I would say the Mesfin, would you have anything to add there? The difference between let and const?
Yeah, he may not be there. Yeah, I would just say the main difference I think I feel is that uh, let is well even constant constant is is changeable, right? You just can't declare it again. But let let you could declare it again. I'm pretty positive. Well, no, wasn't it saying you couldn't do that? I gotta figure this out. Let's 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 get in the console. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so let um Elliot equal Elliot. Or no, let's say first name. Okay, and then Let's say let first name equal Monique and it gave me an error. Let's look at your article then. Okay, while let and const are similar, they are not exactly the same. The main difference between let and const is that const variables need to be clear, declared using an, an initializer or it will generate an error. Okay. Also declaration of the variable with the same name will throw an error. This helps to fix mistakes where one loses a reference when a variable is reassigned. Let and const are already replacing var in many code bases and are additional features via six that will improve code. Okay, that was pretty short, but. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it, it's more of a fixed. But you're still able to change them though. I think that's the part that gets me. Yeah, it's better coding etiquette with JavaScript, yeah. Mm. 
Mexican is still with us. Like, you're not able to reassign them, but um, if it increments or decrements, then it would still do that. If a, if a function increments the number to 40, 43 or 44, then it would still, it would still up increment even if it were a constant. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be declaring it again as 43 or 44, but the, the function would be changing the number. Here, let me see if I can actually do that. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to do. Um, let's say let const equal uh, 10. And then for let i equal 0. And then I less than five. Add semicolons, yeah, I need semicolons. And then um, I plus plus. And then, oops, let me do that. Let me do this again. Yeah. And then let's say, mm, now let's say, Const return const return. I don't know why I said const. I was just meant to say number. Um, return number. Legal return statement. Let me see. Uh, let me see.
I'm looking at your chat. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. I'd have to look at your code. Feel free to share your screen again. Miss Finn, are you still with us? Monique, you, you can share your screen. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, uh, so you're trying this numb. Uh, Sick. I wonder in that situation there's num equals ten and there's number. But I think even still it would return some issue. Like I'm wondering why it doesn't even return. doesn't return 10 even, or if it, you know, it would return 15. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with this, but let me see. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that's good. I wonder why my console is telling me I have an error. Then. Let me see. Maybe you have to place it in a function and then say console log. Uh, I, I think I have node installed, but I've never really like explicitly worked with it. But um, we could probably do that tomorrow. Or, um, you know, just at some later time. But let me look back at our lesson. Yeah. Okay. We we didn't finish this one, I think, right? Uh, let's probably try to finish this one. Yeah. Let's finish this one challenge, and then we can probably call it a day. All right, it cannot be reassigned, blah, blah, blah. As you can see, trying to reassign a variable declared with const will throw an error. You should always name variables if you don't want to reassign using the const keyword. This helps when you accidentally attempt to reassign a variable that is meant to stay constant. A common practice when naming constants is to use all uppercase letters with words separated by an underscore. Okay, so like we did there. Change the code so that all variables are declared using let or const. Use let when you want to want the variable to change and const when you want the variable to remain constant. Also rename 
variables declared with constant const to conform to common practices, meaning const should be in all caps. Okay. So that's let okay. So because the I is gonna change based on the string length then we should use let. But constant creates the sentence with the string. The string is part of that. Okay. Wondering why it's calling it so many times. All right, so we did that. Uh, the sentence should be all caps. Uh, we need to change it for the first sentence. Boom. All right, I'm gonna get this little code started. And drop it in here. And I'm gonna say, let's see what's challenge. So then we know where we left off tomorrow. this and so we have to like the sentence and I refresh my code and yep we left off there. console, it's a typically develops is cool. All right, so that will conclude our study session for today. Uh, I'm glad Monique could join us. Um, was everybody able to get up to that point? Monique, nice one. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Oh, good, Messon. You're still there. Okay. Yeah. 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 We we usually just take it this slow, Monique. Like, if you at any point, if you have a question or like you want to, you know, we try not to go down too many rabbit holes. But if there's a serious question that you have, it's likely that we have the same question. So. Um. You know, we're always glad to like, you know, like if we have a question about tie barriers, like, hey, let's go read up about tie barriers or like, you know, what does this mean? You know, what is the difference between constant let? Like, let's tease that out. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, sometimes rabbit holes can be 
um, you know, they're bad in the sense that you waste a bunch of time, but at the same time, if you're like trying to pick up the jargon, then if you don't know what something means, then, you know, yeah, then, then we should stop and talk about it. And then I think the helpful thing in the group setting is that um, it gives each of us a practice in terms of like explaining something in plain English, you know? Um, I think, and that's something that Messon and I have kind of been working on too, is um, the goal is to be able to explain something in a way that, you know, if I'm up there doing a whiteboard exercise in an interview, or I'm like talking to an employer, then, you know, like you want to try to be able to explain something in simple language that, you know, they would understand that I'm communicating in a way that I understand it well, or that I at least understand it on a junior level, you know, or beyond. But I think that's our goal is like, at least like be able to speak on a junior web developer level or beyond. So we're just trying to get the jargon and understand the concepts well enough that we wouldn't look like a complete fool, you know. Actually, these the, these basics are very very important. Like you know, eventually when you are dealing with some really complex algorithms, you know. Anyway, we are playing with the basics. Like these yeah. are the things that we really need them. So it's good to really understand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these are like fundamental building blocks. If yeah. we don't understand this, then more yeah. advanced concepts are, are going to just be even harder. Or they just won't click, you know. Simply like always when I check some interview questions about JavaScript, always there are common questions like, what's the difference between var, let, and const? And you really have to explain it properly that, you know, to show them that you really understand. Yeah. If at least you are not able to explain this, then, then what is that? Yeah. yeah. JavaScript is weird though. Yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. Like I really don't understand because Aren't you still able to manipulate the constant? You just can't declare it again, correct? Yeah. Like yeah. that's where that's where it kind of messes with me. It's like, um, they say it doesn't change, but it there's instances where it changes, right? Uh. Like you can't reassign it. You can't reassign it. But in, in the, for example, in the late case, you can you can't reassign, but you can change. But in the const, const even have more feature than let. You cannot even change it once you yeah. declare a value with some variable. Then that's it. Yeah, I I like the word read only. Yeah, that's yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, read only. I feel like read only is a term that I get. Yeah. So let would be, it would be writable. It's writable, yeah. yeah. Writable and yeah. It's the local scope. This may be wrong, but somebody was saying uh, you should use const unless you need to specifically do something like this for let, where it has to change. Yeah. And then never use var unless you absolutely need something as a global variable. Yeah. Well, var but is But even then you, you should just gotta use const basically, right? Yeah, var is, is, is almost now 
deprecated. It's like out of the game now, only now, this time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's end it there. I think, let me see what's the next thing. Okay. Yeah. So now we're going to be working with arrays tomorrow and const. Yeah. And we're mutating it. So yeah, this gets into the question that I was having, like, can't you change or mutate an array or mutate a constant. Yeah. So th I think basically they're gonna add something to this array. Yeah. Can, arrays do different things with constants. Yeah. Yeah. You can, add, you can remove, but. Yeah. I think we okay. can see we'll, we'll get into this tomorrow. But, yeah. Uh, that's just kind of a teaser. Yeah. But uh, I'll stop with the recording. But uh, happy coding, everybody yeah. that's joined us on the recording. And um, uh, we will uh, pick back up in the next video. Yep. See you tomorrow. All right. Bye bye.